In this video, we are going to understand about emotion and how emotion is created and generated inside us. Emotions we understand are the building blocks of our feelings. We have anger, we have fear, we have sadness, excitement, kindness, forgiveness. There are many such emotions. But are they just limited to that experience or something beyond? What the scientists have found out, emotions are far more important far more significant in our life because they give us the reality that we experience. Let's understand this through this very unique and intriguing case. David, a gentleman, comes to Dr. V. S. Ramachandran for a very specific disorder. And the disorder is, David was looking at his mother and saying, she appears to be my mother, but she is an imposter. Meaning, say, somebody else who is in disguise of my mother. People could not understand why he is behaving in this, this unusual way. And few days before this, David had met with an accident. It was not a very dangerous one, but definitely his head was damaged. He recovered from that accident. But this unique thing that came to him for his mother and also for father, he would say they are imposters. Now, why this happened? Dr. V. S. Ramchandran who is a leading neuroscientist, could figure this out as Capgras syndrome. Capgras syndrome, which was found out almost 100 years ago by Joseph Capgras, a French psychiatrist, who first saw a lady, her name was Madame Macabre. And Madame Macabre was looking at her husband and saying, he appears to be my husband, but he is an imposter, somebody in disguise. That time, they thought this is a psychological disorder. But now with advancement of science, the scientists, they understand what exactly is happening in our brain. Why this person is not recognizing so close relatives and saying they are imposters. The reason they, they attribute is, although they recognize them by face, but the associated emotion is not coming up when they're, they're seeing them. And if emotion, which should be reciprocating that kind of visual input or that kind of other sensory input is not happening in the body, then we have a dissonance inside. We reject the person or the object as the one we are seeing through our senses. So see how important is emotion. Unless the reciprocating emotion is there, we are not experiencing objects and people in our life. So what had happened in David's mind is the face recognition area called the fugiform gyrus. I have explained that in the mind brain video. If you have not gone through that, I would strongly recommend you to go through that video as well. Where fugiform gyrus, a small part in the temporal occipital junction, which recognizes faces and there is a place in the limbic system of the brain known as amygdala which gives us or keeps the repository of memory of emotions. If they are not in sync, then this kind of a disorder may come. So what they later found out that the connection between the fugiform gyrus and the amygdala, that was damaged. Let's now get to the emotional aspect. What and how the emotions are stored in our brain, how they are there and why amygdala is such an important organ in our brain. Now coming back to the limbic system, as we said, we'll talk about emotions and about our memories. Limbic system is a very important system or it's a set of organs which are mediating our memories and our emotions as well. As we mentioned, Emotion is largely modified, modulated and expressed because of a small part like the size of a peanut in the limbic system known as amygdala. And amygdala, if it is excited, it can lead to hyper expression of emotions. I also mentioned about amygdala and how disastrous can be the consequence in my video, Does the Brain rule our life, where I talked about Charles Whitman, who committed a heinous mass murder in the University of Texas in 1966. So you can go through that video to understand the significance of this small organ as well. 
in order to understand how emotions are organized or how they are generated inside us we need to understand the entire system as we receive different signals through our sensory input and it comes in there is a part organ known as the thalamus which is also part of the limbic system thalamus is kind of a gateway to sensory inputs that means it checks which are the sensory inputs which are important and where they should be sent so it relays then onto different parts of the brain typically the higher part of the brain where they can be processed for example if you are receiving visual signals so the visual signals need to be sent to the visual cortex which is the occipital cortex or occipital lobe this segregation of different inputs are done at that part called the thalamus we can understand the importance of this because there are so many inputs which are happening or there, there are so many things which are happening outside millions of signals are coming in and thalamus sees which are the likely important signals and then it filters out the unnecessary ones and sends this necessary and important ones to the respective location where they can be processed so two things filtering out and then relaying them appropriately to the necessary parts where they can be processed so this is one of the important aspects that the thalamus does but it also does one more thing it sends a very subtle signal to the amygdala where all the previous emotional experiences are stored with regard to objects and situations in the environment so it checks with the past emotional experiences with regard to the objects which are there around and that is checked at the amygdala at a very fast pace so we'll understand this with a simple analogy this analogy is about a police station the moment there is a complaint about a specific person immediately the first thing that in charge of the police station does to check about that person from the police records which are available in that particular police station so immediately they go to the register and check whether the person's record is already there is that person a criminal or not a criminal so that instant check is done by the police station in charge before he sends or go for investigation checks with other posts other police stations and maybe then moves to the court and does the other processing to establish whether that person is a criminal or not but the first thing they do is to check the record available already with the police station similarly as we receive senses from outside the thalamus sends a very subtle signal to the emotional repository that's the amygdala and amygdala which can quickly check about that particular object signal person or the situation and see what had happened in previous occasions and the moment it checks it also has the capability or ability to instantly flash it out instantly send information to different parts especially there is another part which is called the hypothalamus the hypothalamus has the ability it has connections to different parts different glands to secrete the chemicals which can change our emotionality and bring in alertness to ourselves if the signal is significant or if the object is significant let's say someone sees a snake and instantaneously amygdala finds out the emotional experience of the past related to snake and sends that signal to the hypothalamus and hypothalamus sends the message to different glands especially the adrenal system and the pituitary gland to release chemicals so that the body can get activated the autonomic nervous system get activated and either runs away from the snake or fights with the snake known as the fight flight response now this is an extreme case but for all the inputs this check goes on the thalamus receives the signal sends a subtle signal to the amygdala amygdala checks with the past experiences and then it rejects or it activates the system that is required so the body gets into the hyper state 
in fact as we see as further understanding of emotionality is happening they say that there is a kind of a priority list which is fed into the emotional system so it can see which are the ones which are beyond the threshold it not necessarily only for danger it can be also for pain and pleasure so pain pleasure and survival related emotions are stored and mapped on to the respective objects situations people so that instantaneously those signals can be sent and body can be ready to fight with the danger to attract something which is pleasurable or to run away from something which can cause pain so the entire system i hope we understand now with the analogy the first the police officer checks with the data available in the police station amygdala is having that emotional data which is checked as it comes from the thalamus now parallelly thalamus also sends the sensory inputs to different parts of the brain where they are processed there it also has a lot of detailed understanding emotionality what happens in that situation and those information let's say somebody goes through a very difficult situation and suffers that suffering is also that suffering emotion is also passed on to the amygdala where it is stored and the situation is linked for future it's stored so that it can be checked whenever that kind of a situation or that kind of a possibility arises amygdala can quickly make the body activated for action now this amygdala circuit is super fast it's almost more than double the speed of higher order processing so even before we understand our body is activated and it's completely ready for taking action there are few challenges like sometimes the false alarm is also created and that time we take wrong actions many times we are also attracted towards things which are not very much required like pleasurable things like say, sweets the moment sweets come activation happens our body is prepared to get attracted towards the sweet and have it maybe at a higher order when we process and understand sweet is not very healthy for us we want to avoid but because of the activation of the autonomic nervous system and different parts of the body entire body is now ready to grab and swallow the sweets so we can see how emotion is such an important thing which is processed in a place called the limbic system by multiple organs let's take the name of all of these organs i trust we have now understood the entire system amygdala which is having the repository of all past experiences and the corresponding emotions thalamus which processes filtering of the sensory inputs and sends relays them to appropriate higher order processing places in the brain and parallelly it sends a signal very subtle feeble signal to the amygdala to check instantly check what the object or situation is about and what was our past experience and if it is something of significance then the body is alerted to another system known as the hypothalamus so the hypothalamus amygdala and the thalamus all are part of the limbic system which organize and operate the emotionality to a large extent and if emotions are not appropriately aligned or they are not in tune with our experience then there can be a lot of dissonance like what we saw in the capgras syndrome so in case of david although his face recognition area was intact but the linkage of the face recognition area that is the fugiform gyrus to the amygdala was somehow damaged and that was the reason why david was seeing his mother they are appearing like my mother and father but actually they are imposters they are some other people in disguise we have now understood the emotional circuit which is part of the limbic system and if you want to know more about the memory system we check out here if you are finding these videos these discussions on brain and mind and life and our experiences interesting please do consider subscribing to the channel and also do click on the like button so that this video can uh, can really reach out to larger audience and it will mean a lot to us and to our channel